everybody and welcome to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs B and today I'm going to show you how to create an artwork using glue. Today I'm going to show you two techniques to use craft glue within an artwork. We're going to use the craft glue as a border within our task, then also to paint the glue to create a really interesting artwork. I'll show you what I mean. This beautiful flower artwork has the PVA as its border and it separates the paint sections in a really interesting and exciting way. In this example, I used PVA and a secret ingredient, which you'll find out later, and I painted the actual glue itself. Putting it onto black paper really makes the paint stand out really brightly and you can see it has a really cool texture and is a really awesome outcome. Both of these activities are fantastic for young kids as well as adults if you want to have a go. You'll need for this simple yet really fun gluey task today is some watercolour paints, some craft glue, a couple of pieces of paper, and I'll be showing you something that you can use salt for. Okay, as promised, I'm going to teach you two really simple and fun activities that you can do with using some craft glue and a little bit of watercolour paint. So let's go to our first technique. This one, we're creating some borders with our craft glue and then we're gonna paint on the paper around it. So what I'm gonna draw, I'm just gonna give myself an idea of um, something I'm gonna draw. We need to use quite bold lines that are far apart from each other. If they're too close together, the glue is gonna to merge together and we won't have any paper left. So I'm gonna start with a bit of a wave shape here. I'm gonna bring it around with an oval. This does not need to be absolutely perfect like this. This is giving you an idea. So now I'm gonna start on the side of the oval here. I'm gonna bring my line out and I'm gonna wave it a little bit and bring it back in again. Remember these lines can't be too close to one another. We do need a fair gap here. So I'm gonna do the same thing, bring it out and come back in again. So I'm going to repeat that process, but this time I'm going to start here, work my line all the way around and then bring it in over here. Let's repeat that. So what you might be able to tell now is we're making a bit of a, an abstract rose shape. Bringing the rose down now. Maybe give a few suggestions of some leaves coming out like this. Your, your picture does not need to be perfect by any means. And you can absolutely have a go at doing something else as your main picture. But I thought a rose might be a nice sort of introduction. We want to take up most of our page with some interesting lines. There. So step number one is just sketching out an idea of where the lines are gonna go within your piece of paper. Now for the tricky part. We now need to use some craft glue, PVA glue it's also known as sometimes, to draw on top of our pencil lines here and we're gonna let it dry. So we need to be really careful and take a lot of control when it comes to using the glue because it's very different to drawing. So I'm going to very carefully squeeze out some of my glue in a line like that. If you squeeze too hard, the, the glue will come out in a big splatter and it's really hard to get rid of it once it's on the paper. So we do need to take a lot of control and really take our time with this part of the task. You 
can try to get these lines an even thickness. You can always go back and fill in some sections if you need to, but I'm finding that if I'm working too fast, the glue goes really thin. So we do need to be careful with this part, take our time, and you'll get used to how to control the PVA. Notice that we want the PVA to be thick and almost three-dimensional. If I touch my PVA container to my paper here, it's gonna be a flatter appearance. So I'm actually using the PVA, lifting it away from my paper so that it is applied in a 3D kind of way. I might take some time now to go back over some of the lines that I've done that are a little bit blotchy and try to get them a nice even kind of line. But other than that, we'll let this dry. It will probably take a little while, a few hours, and then we'll move on to the next step. Again, I'm gonna start off by sketching my design. It might be a bit difficult for you guys to see, but I'm just gonna do a bit of a leaf pattern to go with my flower that we just did. A couple of leaves coming in from different directions. All right, probably can't see that anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead now and use my craft glue to go over the lines I am going to do some more leaves throughout the paper, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you the idea today with the salt. While the glue is still wet, we're actually gonna pour on some salt. Directly on top. This creates a really cool texture. Now, normally you would do this at the very, very end um, and just cover the entire paper, but I just wanted to show you quickly what the idea is. So, with the salt on the glue, you can see that it creates a really cool icy type of texture there. And we're actually going to use the watercolours to now paint it. But before that, I'm going to finish filling my paper with a design. I would love to see someone have a go at doing a snowflake. I think that would just look really exceptional. So please, if you would like to try this, I think a really detailed, intricate snowflake would be tricky, but also beautiful with the salt granules, make it look really realistic. All right, so I'm happy with that. Bit of a random organic leaf kind of design. And now I'm literally going to fill the whole space with table salt. moving it around to make sure every little bit is covered in salt. Now I just have a very thin piece of paper so I'm finding that the glue with the salt is actually making it fairly heavy so if you have a thicker piece of paper I suggest to use that it will give it a bit more strength. So now we're going to get our brush and water 
and our watercolours. When you add the watercolour to the PVA with the salt, you can see that a really fantastic blending and spreading process happens. The paint and water attaches to the salt, which spreads it really nicely. And it allows you to blend different colors together. I'm just sort of touching it on like that, can you see? If you paint like normal, you'll probably spread the salt around in a way that you don't really want to. So I'm sort of just touching it, dabbing it on like that, getting a whole lot of paint on my brush. And although I'm sticking with greens, I'm having a go at using different types of greens so that it's not just a flat artwork. There's a bit of, bit of tone in there because of the different shades. So I'm trying to just dab onto my salt there. I think you'll agree it looks pretty awesome. You do need to be fairly delicate with it. Touch it fairly lightly so that minimal amount of salt is removed. And I'm finding that I need to use fairly watery watercolors. So I'm getting a fair amount of water with my color and that's helping it to spread through the salt like that. It's really quite relaxing. So let that dry for a good amount of time, but I think you'll agree it is a really fun and interesting activity. Our other glue artwork. Now this is a different technique because we are not painting the glue on this one. We're painting the paper next to the glue and the dried PVA creates a bit of a barrier or a border in between each of these sections I've created with this flower. Here we go. So carefully paint inside and add water to make the paint spread. So I'm just painting with water now and the purple is spreading out, getting thinner and lighter as it comes along. sections nice and wet there I'm gonna grab a, another color and blend it in if you ever get any on the glue you can simply just wipe it off now I'm just gonna paint with water once again I'm painting a nice strong line with paint and then mostly actually using water to fill the rest of the space. It draws out the paint, makes it thinner and it actually makes it a lot easier to work with. I'll show you what I mean. Strong line with watercolor there. And now just spreading it with my water.
So I'm doing a similar task with my grade four students at the moment, and they have really been able to show a lot of success and control with the glue and with the painting. So I would suggest anyone probably over the age of 10 would be able to do a task like this. Obviously, the younger you are, probably the more simplified the image should be. But I think anyone can have a go at this, really. color should I do for the background? Hmm. Now if you're finding that you're not having a lot of success with this task or it's not coming out the way you wanted to, can I suggest that it's possibly because you're not using enough water? A very common mistake when I'm teaching watercolors is that people will use watercolors use the paint, try to use the paint, 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 and the paint will either dry out because they're not using enough water or not look overly interesting because they're not using enough water. So please try to use the strategies I've shown you in that you're literally just painting one or two lines with the actual watercolors themselves and then spreading the paint with water. I'm literally just painting with water right now spreading the colors as far as they'll go. can see that the glue in this task offers a really solid and fantastic border in between each of the sections of the flower, the background and the leaf area as well. I think it looks awesome. So it's as simple as that. You can see that the two outcomes are very different from each other, but they're just as beautiful. And I hope you've had a go at creating one or both of these examples today. Please make sure that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel below Feel free to like and comment and also share any photos on our Facebook page. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.